Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Austray's um, information session on the next round of the Export Market Development Grants Program. Please note this session is specifically for representative bodies and we will be running sessions for other teas uh, in the program. This afternoon we'll have a session on T1 and tomorrow we'll run sessions on T2 and T3. So you're welcome to remain in this session and also attend other sessions uh, that will be delivered. With me today uh, in the room, uh, presenters uh, will be uh, Chungun Liu, who is here to answer any questions. He's a senior legal advisor. Myself, Nima Gunich, who looks after the delivery of the EMDG program, and also my colleague in Melbourne, Tracy Butcher, who is the manager of EMDG policy team. We're pleased to be today to present to you on the next run of the program. Before we begin, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we gather today and pay our respects to the elders past and present. We recognise the enduring connection that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have with this land and we extend our respects to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on this call today. We acknowledge their rich uh, histories, cultures and connections with this land. Here from Sydney, we come to you from the Gadigal land of the Aura Nation, and from Melbourne, we come from the uh, Rungieri land of the Kulin Nation. Some housekeeping uh, for today. Uh, please uh, mute your microphone if you're not presenting, and uh, uh, please, your cameras will be turned off as you join this session. This session is recorded and will be published later on our website. Uh, there's also closed captions if you'd like to turn them on on your computer so you can have that uh, handy for yourself too. And um, you can ask questions later to Slido. We'll open Slido after we finish our presentation. Um, the hashtag is EMDG. And uh, you're welcome to ask questions to Slido or through this WebEx chat here. The questions in the WebEx chat will be then uh, transferred to the Slidos uh, and uh, you can vote on questions and they will be promoted for answering. We will endeavour to answer all your questions in this session today, but if not, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of content on our website and in the guidelines that you can refer to. And if not, uh, please come to us uh, through the inquiry line emdg.help at austria.gov.au uh, or call us uh, to EMDG Help Desk. So um, what we're trying to cover today is basically uh, just recap what EMDG is all about. Uh, we'll provide an overview of the changes of the program as a result of the recent strategic refocus uh, of EMDG. We'll talk about the details of the next round of the program, uh, including uh, eligibility conditions for representative body applicants, and we'll also take you through the steps of how to prepare to apply when we open later in November. And as I've said, there will be time for questions and answers at the end. So what is EMDG? EMDG is a grant program for Australian businesses to help them start and grow their exports. Grants can be provided to small and medium enterprises and their representative bodies to help them undertake export promotion activities and export training. Applicants must match the funding and also applicants must meet all eligibility requirements to be successful to receive the grant. EMDG has got four T's, so we, re we have re uh, retained those four T's in the next round of the program. Those T's are designed to help businesses at certain stages of their exporting journey. They are encouraged to apply when it best suits them on their exporting journey and when the grants would benefit them, benefit them the most. EMDG can provide support depending on the business goals and uh, your exporting status and their four T's, as I said. So the first T is for businesses that are new to export and they never exported before. And we'll talk about the eligibility conditions for that T later this afternoon. T2 is for uh, businesses that are expanding their exports within their existing export markets, and there will be a webinar for that T tomorrow. T3 is for businesses that are established exporters, and they're wishing to expand their export promotion into new uh, key markets. And today we'll focus on the representative body tier. This is for um, uh, the peak industry bodies and representative bodies to support their SME members to become export ready, grow their export activities, 
uh, gain marketing skills and support trade diversification. So again, today we'll focus on that tier. I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Tracy Butcher now to take you through the changes to EMDG and eligibility conditions of the program. Thank you, Noma. So for this round, round four, changes have been made to the EMDG program. So it's important to make sure you're aware of the changes before you apply, particularly if you're familiar with the program already. The changes to EMDG have been made to address challenges that we've had. In particular, amendments made as part of the 2020 reforms created much higher than higher demand and delivered lower grant amounts. So for rounds one, two and three, our most recent rounds, we have offered much smaller grant amounts. And this is because of high demand and the need to allocate all eligible applicants a grant across multiple grant years. And we heard from stakeholders that that, uh, that was a high concern. Because of lessened eligibility criteria, we've seen a much higher volume of very, very small businesses. And the analysis that we have indicates that these businesses are less likely to go on to achieve export success. Among that cohort, we also see a higher proportion of underspends, which may indicate they're just not ready for the program right now. An operational review that was undertaken in 2022 found that there was a need to better balance the level of interest in EMDG with the available funding. And the budget for EMDG is reducing to $110 million in 2025-26. This is still a very substantial government investment in the program, but we need to work the program at any budget that we may have. The changes that we have made to EMDG have been informed by stakeholder feedback, including public consultation processes. This includes an operational review of the program in 2022, a further public consultation process in 2023, which sought feedback about a range of options for the program, and then some targeted consultation about the rules and aspects of the guidelines in 2024. This feedback, along with the extensive data and analysis, has informed the changes to EMDG. The changes that we have made aim to maximise the benefits to businesses and improve grant amounts in the program. A key change we are making in line with other established grant programs includes that applications for EMDG will close once funding once the funding available is fully allocated. This compares to the current approach, which allocates a proportion of funding to all eligible applicants and has meant that grant amounts can be very low in a given round because we simply don't know how many people will, will apply. By making the changes, we will be able to offer larger grant amounts for those that are eligible. We can also let potential applicants know the maximum grant amounts that can be applied for. And this provides much more clarity to help you plan your marketing and, and promotional activities before you apply. There are now new eligibility criteria for small and medium-sized businesses. And this criteria aligns with businesses that can best utilise the funds. Changes mean that we're also encouraging certain applicants to diversify into new key markets that have been identified for the program. That applies to our tier three applicants only. We're also making changes for representative body applicants, which we'll talk about today, which includes seeking more deliberate planning and transparency about how EMDG is being utilised, particularly for small and medium sized enterprises that you represent. And we're also introducing some new compliance measures including that applicants are fit to receive a grant and meet their taxation obligations. So these changes apply from the next round, which is round four. Round four will cover a two year period. You may be eligible to apply for grant agreements for up to two years, depending on your eligibility. The approach provides certainty for successful applicants and reduces the need to apply each year. 
The round is for marketing and promotional activities planned for the 2025-26 and 2026-27 financial year. And the program funding that we have for EMDG for those financial years will be fully allocated as a result of the application process that will open in November. Applications for representative bodies will open on the 6th of November. Then separate to this, applications for businesses applying for tiers 1, 2 and 3 will open on the 12th of November. And we strongly recommend that you prepare ahead of the opening date if you're planning to apply. We will be opening applications until the funding is fully allocated for each of the tiers and we'll assess those applications in the order in which they're received. Once the application period is open, we'll regularly be communicating the status of applications for each of the tiers. This will be on the Austrade website and the online portal where you submit your applications. This is very different from the previous rounds, but it's an important step and it will allow us to set maximum grant amounts at meaningful levels for this program. Applicants can apply for one of four tiers. You can only apply for one tier in the grant round. So tiers one, two and three are specifically for small and medium sized businesses. If you are a business listening today, as Nam is indicating, we do have separate webinars for those tiers this afternoon and tomorrow, or you can watch those sessions online when they're available. Um, so we do uh, suggest that applicants please carefully consider the tier that's right for them, otherwise they may be ineligible. For the round, maximum grant amounts will range from $30,000 to $80,000 for the different tiers. The maximum grant amounts for each tier will be, uh, so for tier one, up to $30,000 per financial year, Tier 2 up to 50,000, Tier 3 up to 80,000 and for our representative bodies up to 50,000 per financial year. This provides certainty for the first time about how much you may receive if you're successful in the program. The minimum grant amount available for Tiers 1, 2 and 3 is $20,000 per financial year. There is no minimum grant size for representative bodies but all applicants must be able to match the grant funds. We anticipate that we will offer around 1,900 grants in total in this round. So as this session is specifically for our representative body applicants, we'll now talk about the eligibility requirements mm -hmm. for that tier. The full details of eligibility criteria are in the guidelines and the rules, which you can find on the EMDG website. To be eligible as a representative body, you must promote the interests of a group of Australian businesses. You can apply for EMDG to undertake export promotional activities or export training activities on behalf of your small and medium sized members. For round four, representative bodies can apply for grants up to $50,000 per financial year. And we anticipate offering around 130 representative body grants. And again, applications for representative bodies will open on the 6th of November. To be eligible as a representative body, you need to meet the requirements in section 17 of the rules. So that includes things like you are promoting the interests of a group of Australian businesses. The number of your members in your group is a substantial proportion of the members in that industry, that part of the industry or those industries. And that you're not exporting eligible products in your own right, or at least that's not one of your primary activities. And also that you're not distributing income to members or shareholders. As part of being an eligible representative body, your members must be ready to export, exporting or have a designated connection to eligible products. And an eligible product includes goods, services, intellectual property or know-how, events, 
and software. An eligible product that's a good can be made outside of Australia, but it must have a substantially Australian origin. To be eligible, at the time you apply for a grant and at all times while you're a grantee, you must be an eligible person within the meaning of the rules. So this could include things like a, a body corporate under the Corporations Act, an association or cooperative, a partnership that is an that is Australian with at least half of the partners Australian persons, a trust or a body corporate established for a public purpose. You must have a valid ABN when you apply and after you've entered into a grant agreement and we verify that at assessment stage and before we make any payments. You may be eligible to apply for EMDG to undertake new export marketing and promotional activities on behalf of your small and medium sized members. Or, and, and or you could be providing export training to your small and medium sized members to help them become export ready and increase their export skills. Your proposed activities must have a direct link to export and must support Australian small and medium sized enterprises. For the purposes of EMDG, small and medium sized enterprises are defined as businesses with less than $20 million in turnover. Requiring your activities to support small and medium businesses better aligns with the objective of the EMDG Act. And you'll need to demonstrate how your proposed training or marketing and promotional activities will benefit your small and medium sized members in your plan to market. If you're applying for marketing and promotional activities, you must demonstrate how they are new for the grant years. So new activities could relate to things like new or different marketing and promotional activities, promoting products and services to new markets, promoting new products, services or innovations that are happening in your industry, promoting products or services on behalf of new members, or realigning the promotional activities to new trade diversification priorities. If you're applying for marketing and promotional activities, you need to have a high quality plan to market. The need for a plan is a key part of the program and the plan should tell us what you plan to do in terms of your marketing and promotional activities. In the plan to market, you must demonstrate how your proposed promotional activities are new and how they'll be benefiting your small and medium sized businesses. To be considered high quality, all the mandatory questions must be completed with sufficient details. If you're planning to undertake export training activities, you must demonstrate you have the skills and experience to deliver or arrange the delivery of those training activities. And the, pro the proposed training will be approved at Aus by Austrade at the time of application. So therefore it's very clear what the training is for, and we are agreeing to support that specific training under EMDG. If you are applying for export training activities, you will now be required to provide a high quality plan for the proposed training activities. This is new for this round of the program. We are asking for the plan so we can better ensure the proposed training is focused on export and, in light, and aligns with the intention of the program. And Austrade will be using those plans to approve the proposed training at the time of application. You must match the dollar value of the grant with your own funds. So your total eligible expend, expenditure must be at least double the grant amount you're seeking. So for example, if you are awarded a grant agreement of $30,000 per financial year, your total eligible expenditure on marketing and promotional activity needs to be $60,000 per financial year. The amount in your grant agreement is the maximum that you, you will receive. So if you spend more, you will not receive more. 
spread money. If you spend less, you will receive an amount equal to the amount you contribute. And you'll need to declare that you can match the grant uh, at the time of application. You must be fit to receive the grant and this means you comply with all your tax obligations and also you don't have any outstanding convictions and you're not conducting your business in an unprofessional manner. So I'll now hand back to Noma who will discuss eligible expenses. Thank you, Noma. Thank you so much, Tracy. So as Tracy has outlined, uh, to be eligible in EMDG in simple terms, you must be an eligible person, so must be a representative body for this year, uh, must, have, um, uh, must be promoting interest of your SME members, a uh, substantial kind of group of SME members. Um, you can promote products on their behalf or you can uh, deliver export training or arrange the delivery of export training. And you also must have eligible expenses. So, as you are preparing your applications, uh, you uh, need to look at what can you actually claim once you come to submit your milestone report later. So for representative bodies, you must have eligible expenses um, that uh, will uh, be incurred in the grant agreement term, which for this round is 25, 26 and 26, 27, so two years, to be able to receive payments during that grant agreement term. So it is important that you have the understanding of the eligible expenses. They are outlined in the grant guidelines under section five um, and uh, those categories uh, that we will just shortly show on the slide have been maintained in the program. So they have not changed. Uh, the categories are still the same if you are familiar with the EMDG program. They are outlined in this slide. And as I said, there must be in respect of promotional activities undertaken during the grant agreement period for the purposes of marketing eligible products on behalf of your members. Um, also, representative body grantees uh, can undertake uh, training activities or deliver training activities uh, or arrange the delivery of those by a third party for the purposes of developing marketing skills of their SME members in um, promoting their products in uh, foreign markets. So you can um, employ or maintain a representative in a foreign country and those expenses would be eligible. You can also undertake short trips to a foreign country. You can uh, have consultants to, to help you with um, those extra promotion activities. You can have short trips within Australia to meet uh, or attend trade shows uh, that are with um, a substantial number of uh, foreign buyers. Um, you can also uh, claim costs associated with foreign buyer visits. You can solicit for business in a foreign country, which is usually trade shows, so attending trade shows for that. Free samples, so if you are sending free samples on behalf of your uh, members, uh, you can claim that as well. Uh, you can also have some costs associated with promotional uh, materials, intellectual property rights for your members, and of course, training activities is a big feature for representative body tier. So, as I said, we have not changed the categories of eligible expenses, but what we have done uh, in this round, we have tightened some of the uh, conditions uh, around those eligible expenses. So, if we go back again to that slide, just to highlight those uh, couple ones that are important. So, short trips within Australia and also to a foreign country, you can only claim economy um, AFS for uh, going forward in EMBG. So, so far we had allowed up to business class, but that is no longer eligible. So when you come to uh, submit your milestone report later in 25, 26, 26, 27, we'd like to see uh, equivalent costs of the economy class. So if you are traveling at a higher uh, AFA, uh, that is uh, obviously your prerogative, but we can only need, uh, ask you to show us the expenses equivalent to the economy class in the milestone report. We'll outline uh, the, the evidence that you will need to provide in your grant agreement and in the milestone uh, report form that you will need to complete. So that is for both the short trips within Australia and uh, to foreign countries. Also, we have tightened some rules for um, travel allowances per, per day. So that is now 350 maximum for both. Free samples, uh, there is a limit to how much you can claim for free samples up to 15,000. So if you do spend more, you need to fund the rest of that cost, but we can only um, acknowledge up to 15,000 in EMDG. Also very important as you're planning for, uh, for your application is to understand what is not eligible or what the grant money cannot be used for. 
Obviously, these are listed here and also at section 5.3 uh, 2 in the grant guidelines. So any expenses that are covered uh, by uh, financial assistance programs or grant programs that you have received uh, funding for, uh, for any activities that you are undertaking. So there's no double dipping allowed in the MDG. Um, the sale of export of products that contravenes Australian law. So absolutely that is not funded by MDG. Sponsorships or events, it's not funded by MDG. Any capital expenses, any expenses uh, for trade with New Zealand, so that is absolutely ex excluded, as well as any any uh, promotion to countries that might be on the sanctioned list of uh, sanctioned countries uh, as well, or sanctioned products. Expenses that you already have paid for. So what it means if you someone, a third party, already paid for that expense for you to attend a trade show, for example, you cannot claim that same cost uh, under EMDG. Any sales-related expenses are not eligible. Any salaries or re remuneration costs um, for your staff. Any, obviously, illegal activities. Expenses that may have detrimental impact on uh, Australia's reputation. And grant writing expenses are not eligible under the program. So please do not confuse consultants with grant agents because uh, having a consultant in a foreign country that is actually helping you promote the products or, or on behalf of your members, those costs are eligible but not grant writing costs. And um, we cannot have uh, uh, your SME member claim the same cost as you are if both of you are an EMDG grantee at the same time. So there's no double living in that area either. So again, this is all outlined in the grant guidelines. We're very happy to take questions from this later or um, you know, answer your inquiries through our EMDG help desk. Our next sec section would be about how to prepare to apply in the next round of the program. There are eight simple steps that we will outline for you one by one in this uh, next uh, se section of this presentation. So as you can see, they're very simple steps um, and any anyone could follow them. We have uh, intentionally released all the uh, grant information, the grant guidelines, uh, the website content, the sample application form, uh, all the templates that you need to have ready to upload with your application when, when it opens in November. So please use this time between now and November to, to, to prepare all of this documentation so you can actually be ready to submit your application on time. So first and foremost, if I can ask you to please read the guidelines. Most of your questions are unanswered in, in that document. Uh, please make sure that you use the round four grant guidelines, which is in respect of uh, the program running for 25, 26 and 26, 27. Also, we have a lot of content on the website that you should be reading as well in preparing your application. The next important step for you is to have digital identity. You cannot submit a grant application through uh, hard copy or otherwise, or by email. It must be done through the EMDG online portal, as always in the program, as you know, uh, in recent years. So for that, you must have your MyGov ID or digital identity. Please set it up now. You can also uh, download that, obviously, all the instructions from the ATO website uh, to, to guide you how to set it up. The next step is for you to connect your uh, digital identity, MyGov ID, with your um, business ABN through the um, uh, RAM access. So please do that. That's important. You will need that when you uh, log on into the EMDG online portal. And once you set up your digital identity, if you already don't have that, please log on into the EMDG online portal ahead of uh, applications opening just to see how that works so you can be ready for that. I need to stress that Austria does not own MyGov ID or, um, and, or the RAM, so please uh, contact ATO if there are any technical issues with you setting it up and start early because they do take time to um, resolve any technical issues that you may have. You must have it ready when we open in November because we won't have time to wait for you to set it up then. The next thing that you must have, in the, in the, obviously in the course of running your business, is your ANZ code. It's your, it's your unique industry classification code that describes your, um, your business. So that will be asked of you in the application form as well. So please have it handy. 
The next step is, is to work on the website. So in addition to the guidelines, as I said, we have published a sample application form for each tier. So the questions will be a fit for purpose for each tier when you go in November to apply, depending on which tier you tick. So for representative bodies, those questions will be fit for purpose for you. But please read the sample application form now. Prepare the answers in a, in a Word document. Prepare all your attachments and uh, evidence that you need to submit with your application so that you're ready to submit. The design of the application form is now uh, that uh, once you come to the online form, you will see that we will ask you the core eligibility criteria first. And if, and if you do not meet them, you can't progress further. So basically, it will filter those ineligible applicants uh, straight uh, in the program so you don't progress and waste time in filling out the form. As Tracy outlined, the key aspect of round four is the high quality plan to market. So the previous program did have that requirement, but previously we said it can be any business plan. Going forward, this must be a high quality plan, strategic and unique to your business or to your representative body applying on behalf of your SME members to obviously promote their interests. So please, um, Look at the exemplar on our website, look at the template for representative body template of the high quality plan to market, and make sure that you're ready um, uh, with those questions and answers uh, before you start applying in November. Those questions will be integrated as part of the online application form. So what we would recommend is for you to prepare the answers ahead of that and be ready to cut and paste them in the online form to, to be more efficient in completing the form. Again, it's very important that the, that the plan is strategic, that you have answered all questions satisfactorily, that you have provided evidence that we're asking you for, that you have all uh, expenses planned for it. So the budget needs to be very clear for both years if you're applying for both and uh, be ready to submit. If your plan to market is not um, complete or it's lacking sufficient detail, it may not, it may be rejected. So we may not proceed to uh, offer you a grant agreement. This is an important step for you to be ready to apply in round four. And we really uh, ask you to do that. For representative bodies, as we said as well, if you are planning to apply to uh, deliver export training or export readiness training to, uh, to your SME members, you must also submit a high quality training plan, export training plan. Again, there is an exemplar on our website. There is a template for it on our website. Again, similarly with the high quality uh, plan to market, you must complete it sufficiently with sufficient detail, attach anything that you need to that and be ready to upload uh, the training plan uh, in November when you start applying. Um, again, we'll assess the training plan and we'll come back to you if it is eligible or not. It must be of high quality, so please uh, pay attention to that as well. And then in addition to high quality training plan and uh, plan to market, if you are, and you are, if you're in this webinar a representative body, you must uh, provide a submission to substantiate that you are actually meeting all these uh, criteria for a representative body. There's also a couple of declarations that you, need, that you need to make as part of the application form. So there are uh, those declaration texts will be uh, linked in the online form for you to read first and then accept. If you are promoting services on behalf of your members that are other than tourism, there is a specific template that you need to uh, complete and then upload that attachment with your application. And similarly with the goods uh, made outside of Australia, you must complete that as well and upload with your application to substantiate the uh, significant Australian origin uh, requirements in the program. You will also need to attach as a representative body uh, evidence that, that you are a rep body. So that is your memorandum of uh, uh, incorporation, articles of association or uh, constitution. Obviously, profit and loss statements and balance sheets are required too, and um, any uh, business activity statements on behalf of uh, your, um, your organisation, just to understand if you are tax compliant or not. As Tracy outlined, we'll open uh, to applications for representative bodies on the 6th of November, so we're starting with your group first. Uh, I want to stress the reason why we're opening is because uh, we do know that representative body T is smaller. We, we're starting with your T first um, and then we'll, we'll open for other T's a bit later. 
Um, that does not mean that you have any advantage uh, you know, uh, over other applicants in the program. Your tier is very specific, very specific eligibility criteria, very specific funding that we have allocated for that tier, and we won't be moving funding around between tiers. So you dare to apply, and then the funding is exhausted for your tier, we will close your tier to applications. Once you submit your application, you will receive an acknowledgement email to say, yes, thank you, we received your application. That does not guarantee that you will be successful, given for, for the reasons that I just outlined. High demand of the program may mean that we may not assess your application because the funding has been exhausted before we come to assess your application. And obviously, eligibility requirements must be met before we can offer you a grant agreement. So just to recap again, your application must be complete, must be of high quality in terms of all of those attachments that we need to provide, and we will not accept any incomplete or late applications in the program. Hence the, the opening of the, or the release of the guidelines with earlier, so you can be ready for that. And I just wanted to spend maybe a couple of more, uh, minutes on some more information that we have for exporters uh, or that might be useful for your SME members, in addition to EMBG. Australia provides trade services, as you know, and there is a wealth of information uh, about um, export um, advice, training, uh, and tools that is free of charge. Um, there is a lot of information about specific markets on the Global World Toolkit pages as well. Uh, you can access the Global World Toolkit pages at uh, export.business.gov.au. And um, you can, those resources are free of charge, obviously, are available to anyone, uh, also applicants, uh, but also someone who is not intending to apply in EMDG. So please uh, make them available or may, may do, make your members aware of those resources uh, because they are useful to help them think about how they strategically plan for the high quality, plan to markets, etc. I'd like to say that uh, all this information is available on our website at austria.gov.au forward slash EMDG. You can ask us uh, questions through emdg.help at austria.gov.au, call us on 13 28 78, and also subscribe to our EMDG update newsletter that we regularly send to our, all our subscribers about the current rounds and any future rounds. So this brings me to uh, the questions and answers section. Uh, so we'll now open for Slido. Again, the hashtag is EMDG. Uh, we'll try to answer all your questions. Please um, uh, like them if you would like them to be promoted to be answered. If for, by, for any reason we can't answer them, we will endeavour to do so uh, if you call us or you know, send us an inquiry through the emdg.help as soon as possible. So let's open for questions. Thank you. Just as people are getting ready, you can also ask uh, in, in the WebEx chat, you can ask a question there, and we'll make sure that it's uh, moved across the slider so people can see it and vote on the question. A couple of minutes, let's wait for that.
So what I understand there are some questions in the Webex chat. Slido is a bit lagging in showing questions. So we might read them out and, and see how we go. Cool. Uh, there's a question here regarding if we used to apply and got an EMDG in round one, can we apply again in round four? Right. So the question is, if, if someone applied in round one, can they again apply in round four? Obviously, that depends on which deal you're applying for and on your AT grant history in EMDG. So if you exhausted at ATs, you can no longer apply if you are a business applicant. For representative bodies that does not apply, you can come back and apply in round four. Just understand if that question is only about the, the grant history, because grant history does not apply for rep bodies. They can apply for more than ATs, provided they meet all eligibility requirements of round four. Um, there's another question. Could you please clarify about the grant amount? Is the minimum spending required 20,000 for tier one or um, the minimum amount paid is 20,000? So for T1 applicants, there is a minimum capacity for spend of 20,000. That is correct. And there's also a minimum grant amount of 20,000. So for you to receive a grant of 20,000, which is the minimum grant, you must have worth of 40,000 of eligible expenses, which we will match. So you provide 20, we provide 20. And the capacity to spend will need to be demonstrated for the financial year at the time of applying. Uh, there's another question in the chat. Um, can you clarify um, what training costs uh, can be included um, as if you're applying as a rep body? Okay. Maybe I'll throw that question to Tracy, if that's okay. Sure. So I think we're thinking about training that's obviously related to export and increasing the skills of your small and medium-sized members um, in, in helping them to export their, their products and market them overseas. So I think that needs to be planned and you'll see in the plan to market there's a series of questions that will help you um, sort of step through what what um, we, we would like to know about that training. From our perspective, training does not include things like regular meetings with members, which we would consider to be, uh, you know, a, a normal occurrence for um, representative bodies, for example. Thank you, Tracy. There is a related question about new activities in Slido. It says, regarding the requirement for new activities, does this suggest that attendance at regularly occurring trade shows is ineligible? Again, how does this fit with the need to have consistent presence in the market to build and sustain meaningful brand presence? So um, I think the question is about what is new, what has constituted yeah. new activities. So um, no, it doesn't. We're not necessarily saying you can't attend a regular trade show, but what we're asking is what is the outcome from attending that trade show? How are you newly supporting uh, either new members, targeting something different, promoting a different product or an innovation in that industry? This is a grant program, so it is about supporting behavioural change um, and and not just uh, you're funding the same activities over and over again. So I think you need to think about the activities that you're undertaking and how that might be considered new under the program. Okay, there's a question in Slido. Can a representative body apply for multiple grants? For example, a grant for each or two different countries for market diversification. No, you cannot. You can only apply for one grant agreement in round four. So you can mix and match between T's or have multiple applications. So one ABN, one application. Can an organization apply as an exporter and as a, and as a rep body? No, you cannot. As uh, similar to answer to the previous question, you can only apply once in one tier that is best suiting your export uh, uh, needs or your diversification needs. Or if you are a rep body, you must apply in that rep body tier. But you cannot have two applications uh, across the tiers.
there is a question about economy class. Is premium economy class as economy class, I, I believe? No, it's up to the economy. So not premium economy, if it is, is allowed. Just economy, please. Um, there is a question about MyGov ID. Does, there, does an individual need to set up or use their digital identity for a representative body application? So the digital identity needs to be linked to the ABN of the business applying. So that has to be linked, and please follow the instructions by ATO how to set it up. Just looking at more questions. Uh, there is a question about how many grants were given under rounds one to three. So for representative body tier, all up, we provided uh, 131 grants across the three rounds of the program. So in the first round, we had about 77 grant agreements, second round about 20, and the third round about they were off about 30. So all up 130. So that guided us to provide some modeling to you to show what we estimated if all of those current grantees in the red body applied and are eligible what the grant funding would be for them. Obviously, if applicants apply for less than 50,000 in this representative body tier, we could write more grants or offer more grant agreements. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at which questions I have not answered yet. Um, we talked about new activities. Are there any questions in the WebEx? Uh, yes, there are a few more. Yeah, um, so what constitutes a new market for a body that represents a large number of businesses? How does the requirement of activities only in new markets fit with the requirements to have a consistent presence in a market to ensure long-term sustainable trade relationships? So that relates to the new activities that we just answered. I think it's a very similar question. So you need to demonstrate, obviously when you, when you are preparing your plan to market, the questions you will see will actually help you with that thought process about what are you doing now? What have you been doing in the past? And demonstrate that what you're planning to do is new and different to support uh, your SME members in that market. So we're moving away from funding exactly the same activities or business as usual activities. You need to demonstrate that they're new and different and that those outcomes align with the objectives of the program. There's another question in the chat. Is the application form website-based or do we need to download a template to fill out and upload? Yes, well, thank you for that question. I can clarify that again. The application form is online, so you cannot uh, complete a template and send it by email or hand it in as a hard copy. It must be uh, submitted online. What we, however, have provided is a sample application form for you to see the questions, prepare the answers, and then log in using a, your MyGov ID identity to, um, to complete it online. Two more on the slide. Two more on the slide, Anna. Okay. So, Nema, I've got one here. It says, yes, sure. if we are an organisation receiving state government funding, can we still apply? So, um, as I said before, there's no double dipping in, in the program uh, in terms of you using the grants to match the funding. Um, but if you are entirely funded by... Um, by state government, we probably need to look into that as well and we'll come back to you. John, what would you... What would you say? Okay, so it's a matter of principle, um, as you pointed mm -hmm. out very uh, correctly, that uh, there's no double dipping mm -hmm. between uh, you know financial assistance obtained from different government bodies. Yes. Um, however, if the purpose of the the funding from a different government department is actually different, fundamentally different to what EMDG covers, the activities are different. Yes. Uh, in principle, uh, EMDG is separate. Uh, separate to that. To support different. Uh, mm -hmm. Activities. Yes, it's about activities. So if you are receiving funding for something completely different and you're applying for EMDG for different, such as training activities or export promotion activities, 
we, you may be eligible for applying for that. We're very happy to look into your case if you write to us at envg.help at austria.gov.au and we'll come back to you with more detail. Thanks, Norma. We've also got um, a question slash comment here. Um, it looks like this person, they've recently completed final, final milestone payments for Tier 3, so they don't think they're a rep body. Um, so can they still apply? Um, uh, so I'd just like to highlight that we've got um, some further up and coming webinars that they might be interested in this afternoon and tomorrow. Um, and so you'll need to consider your grant history and how many uh, grants you've received under Tier 3. But um, there's definitely a Tier 3 webinar on tomorrow afternoon for that person that's put in that comment. Thank you, Tracy. That is correct. Uh, please come to that webinar. And again, for your specific circumstances, you can write to us and we will look into your grant history and uh, confirm that for you. Um, there's a question whether this video is recorded. Yes, it is. And we'll publish it on our website as well so you can watch it later. So maybe another one here for you, Norma. Can yes. rep body staff wages, salaries be considered for match funding? No, they cannot. That is ineligible expense. Okay. Um, I think we've already addressed this one, but can the plan to market be uploaded? Uh, no, it cannot be uploaded. We have streamlined the way how the application form will work. So the questions will be embedded in the online application form. By all means, you can look at a template you can complete the answers and then you can be you know quicker in cut and pasting that in the online form but the plan to market is incorporated within the form it also has its benefits because it's coming to australia into our system and that will also help our trade colleagues to support you with any further trade services should you be eligible for them later on we've got another one about if we can open the grant put portal early so they can um, save a draft application? Unfortunately, we cannot do that for the reasons how we actually uh, receive applications and assess them in the order they're received. So we cannot um, open them earlier to anyone. They're opening at 10 a.m. on 6th of November, Australian Eastern Standard Time for representative bodies, and then at 10 a.m. on the 12th of November for uh, other teas. And Nemra, I think you might have covered this one, but um, it's been there for a little while. Foreign visitor buyers, is that covering flights, hotels, per diems, fees to attend an Australian trade fair or other cost? So looking at that question. Yes, in principle, yes, but we need to assess that once, once they submit their eligible expenses. Are there any more questions? We've got one about when will I'm sure templates be live online? Can't find them now. Um, so I think Noma already addressed this as part of the, the her presentation, um, that there are actually templates already available online. So that includes the sample application forms and exemplar plan to markets. Um, so as you can see on the screen, it's austrade.gov.au forward slash emdg. Um, and you can follow the prompts through there. Yes, they're absolutely on our website. Um, we have refreshed the, the structure of the website, so uh, this is uh, under the eligibility conditions for each tier. Also very happy to send you links if you email us at uh, EMDG Help Desk. Here's another one, Nirma. What happens if the proposed activities in the high quality plan change? but the activities and expenses are still eligible for EMDG. So it's important that you uh, tell us that as soon as possible within your master, first master report that you need to submit and upload any changes that have occurred in your uh, plan to market. We do, do recognise that things do change, but you must let us know about them. And then we will look at them and assess and obviously uh, advise you whether you're still eligible and if you are eligible to re receive the payment. Is there any maximum word limits for the questions in the application form or plan to market, Norma? 
Uh, the online form will, will guide you, um, I believe, not to write lengthy, lengthy answers. So there could be some guidance for you, but we're not uh, doing um, kind of a hard cutoff limit, given that we recognize businesses are different. Smaller and larger businesses may want to uh, present a bit more information. So um, guidance and instructions will be in the online form for you. Okay. I think we have answered most of the questions, so maybe we'll just give maybe a few more seconds for people to post questions or vote on those final questions coming through um, for us to answer in the final five minutes of this webinar. There's a question about ready to export, and I would suggest that you come to the webinar this afternoon for D once if you haven't registered, so we can actually take you through what it means. Uh, but your question is about if you technically launched into the uh, overseas market, does that mean you you already exported and have export earnings? And if you have, then you cannot apply on D one. You must be ready to export and new to export, meaning never exported before. Uh, there's a question about if you submit your application and um, we are asking you for more information and by the time you provide, you miss out. So that is why we have released the grant guidelines and all the instructions ahead of opening. And we're asking you to prepare all questions and be ready to submit them in November. We won't be coming back to you for ask for more. If the application is incomplete, or there's no attachments, or the attachments are wrong, or there's some issue with your application, it will be deemed ineligible. We, can, we, don't, we can't go back and forth asking you for more information, given that people are waiting to be assessed and be offered a grant agreement that have been uh, you know, ready to do so. So um, unfortunately, we cannot do that anymore in EMDG. Okay, I think this brings us to the end of the webinar. Thank you so much. We'll, I guess, review all the questions again. Uh, if we haven't answered them uh, and we know who posted them, we'll come back to you directly. But please come to emdg.help. Um, uh, at austria.gov.au or call us at EMDG Help Desk. Also read the guidelines. I'm sure a lot of questions are answered in that document as well. We thank you uh, and we wish you best of luck with your preparations for uh, applying uh, in the next round of EMDG. I thank Tracy and Chung for supporting the delivery of this webinar today and wish you all the best.